Welcome to the video. So today we're going to be doing a bergamot reconstruction. What that means is we're going to take a natural product, in this case bergamot, and we are going to go and look at the constituents of the oil. And then we're going to take those constituents as aroma chemicals and we're going to put them together in the same proportions and see how close that smells to the original. So let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, what is bergamot? Well, I already did a video about this in my video on citrus fruits, but just to recap, bergamot is a citrus fruit, but it's not something that everyone's familiar with. And the reason for this is because it's not a citrus fruit like a lemon or an orange that we eat. It's a citrus fruit that's pretty much only used in perfumery. Bergamot is native to Calabria, which is the southernmost province on mainland Italy. So if you look at a map of Italy, it will be right next to Sicily, at the peninsula that's at the very bottom. So that's where almost all of the world's bergamot is grown. Though saying that since then, some trees have been planted in other locations uh, like Morocco, Tunisia, and other parts of Africa, and you can grow it there too. The oil is found in the peel. So what you have to do to get it out is effectively press it. So this could be done manually, or it can also be done using machines. And you literally press the peel, the oil comes out, and then you can collect that and use it. Bergamot oil is the only citrus oil in which limonene isn't the only major component. In most citrus oils, limonene makes up the bulk of the oil, but in bergamot there's also a lot of linalol and linalol acetate. These are very common aroma chemicals, they're found a lot in nature, um, and if you know what these smell like, you'll instantly be able to recognize them in bergamot oil itself. You also want to be a bit careful when using bergamot oil in perfumery, and the reason for that is it contains something called bagaptine. Now, bagaptine is phototoxic. So what that means is if you have bagaptine on your skin and then when light shines on it, it will actually react and cause a rash. Because of this, the IFRA, who are effectively the safety standards agency for perfumery, have said that your perfume's only safe if you use less than 0.4% in the final product. Now, bergamot is something that's been used a lot for a long time. And because of this, people wanted to find ways around that. And what they've actually developed is a type of bergamot oil that's had the bergaptine removed. And it's called bergamot bergaterpene free. Um, that's the bergamot oil that I have. I would recommend if you get some bergamot oil, you get this as well. And the reason is because that bergaptine has mostly been removed, you can actually use a lot more of it in your final products, which removes some of the kind of restrictions while still keeping your perfume safe to use. Some people say the burger terpene free oil doesn't smell quite as good as original. This may be the case because in chemistry it's always hard to completely separate out one thing without taking a bit of something else. It's a bit like when you're making decaf coffee, if you take out the caffeine, um, some of the flavor can go well along with it as well, but I think it's definitely worth it. I don't think the effect of that is massive and I think it's definitely worth it to have a safe product that you're working with. So I would recommend getting some burger terpene free bergamot oil Anyway, so that bergamot burger terpene free is what I'm using in this video as my reference. I've got that diluted down to 10% and what we're gonna do is make the reconstructions and then we're gonna dilute those down to 10% as well and then we're gonna compare them and see what the difference is. Right then, so before we start, why actually bother with this whole reconstruction thing? Um, I think there are a few good reasons. So firstly, one thing is naturals are essentially nature's accords. And in perfumery, one of the main things that we do is try to make accords, right? So by knowing how nature constructs its accords, what kind of ratios of materials go well together, what kind of percentages, that I think can transfer over into when we're making accords, um, maybe it will give us some ideas of what kind of ratios will smell natural or blend well together. So that's one reason. Another one is there aren't actually that many opportunities to do this, and that's because a lot of naturals are either really complicated or actually will be made up of constituents, um, which are aroma chemicals that are actually hard to get or aren't so common. But in the case of bergamot, all of the major constituents are actually common aroma chemicals, so limonene, linalol, linalol acetate, all of the components in bergamot you should be able to find in a regular perfumery starter kit. So I think this is a good one for most people to be able to try. And the other reason is bergamot is really widely used in perfumery. It's used in lots of different perfume types, things like citrus colognes, but also as a top note all around in every kind of perfume. And because it's so commonly used, I think it's a good thing to study to understand the nuances of and understand the behavior of how it functions. So then, in order to do the reconstruction, firstly, I had to actually go and look up the composition of bergamot oil. 
what I did was I found two research papers, one which was a review of Calabrian bergamot oils and how the compositions have changed over time, and the other one was someone who looked at Tunisian bergamot oil, and I thought it'd be interesting to compare the two. So the paper on Calabrian bergamot oil had basically taken the composition of bergamot oil from the 1950s up to present day, and it was looking at how things had changed over time. So part of this is because the actual methods used in manufacturing and extracting the oil have changed since then. So that has led to nowadays we've probably got higher quality bergamot oil than what they used to have in the 50s. This is also kind of the reason that I don't ever really try to distill anything or make my own essential oils because you'll often find that the manufacturer will have years of expertise. So if you would go and distill your own oils, um, you're missing out on all this experience and all of these special techniques or machinery which might make an actual much better quality final product than something you could just make on your own easily at home. In the other paper which was the Tunisian bergamot, the main difference I noticed was there was a lot higher amount of limonene compared to linalyl acetate. So again, I thought this would be interesting to see how they smell different. Um, but it also does bring up another point about naturals which is if you grow them in different places, they are gonna smell different even if they're the same species. And the reason for that is things like the nutrients in the soil, things like the climate, the amount of daylight hours, um, and all of these different elements will actually go and affect how the plant grows and then go on to affect how the oil uh, it produces smells as well. Another factor that was mentioned in the first paper was how the different time of year that you harvest it can affect how the oil smells or the composition of the oil itself as well. So there are lots of different factors even if you're just looking at one thing which in this case is bergamot. So looking at the actual compositions and all the percentages given in the paper, we actually find that there's lots of different ingredients because it's a thorough analysis but we don't actually need to worry about most of them. What we're going to do or what I did is basically took all of the aroma chemicals that I actually owned and just took those out and rewrote a simplified formula in the same ratios but only using those ingredients. This allows us to effectively ignore most of the stuff which is there in trace amounts and while this stuff could affect the smell obviously and it probably does to some degree, in terms of our reconstruction it's not really necessary to be 100% perfect with every single thing. Actually part of the exercise is just trying to work out how much can we get or how far can we get with just the major components or some of the key components that we find in there. Once I got and made my simplified formulas, I then went to collect all the raw materials, all the pre-diluted raw materials that I would need to make the blends. And I also evaluated these first to check that they were still smelling good and that no off notes had developed. The reason that this is important in this case is because bergamot contains a lot of terpenes and terpenes can be a bit unstable and break down. So when you've got pre-dilutions of terpenes, you wanna make sure that you check them every now and again to check that they haven't gone off too much or developed too many off notes. If that happens, then you should just replace it with a fresh pre-dilution. Um, terpenes are also good to keep in the fridge if you wanna keep them fresh, that's another way of helping them last longer. So once I had my pre-dilutions, it was a simple exercise, standard drill, just weigh everything out into the correct amounts and then I had my samples. The other thing about the samples is that they are diluted down to 10%, which meant I could compare them with the standard bergamot oil, which was also diluted to 10%, so I could do kind of a fair test. Okay then, so for the results. So the first thing I noticed was that the natural bergamot, when compared to the two reconstructions, definitely smells a lot better. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is, um, but it's like it's got this extra kind of dimension to it. It definitely smells similar to the other two. You can tell they're the same kind of thing, but there's something about the natural one which just kind of pops a bit more. It's got a bit more color to it. I think it's a bit brighter. That's probably the best way to say it. It's just got this brightness, which the other ones don't have. Um, and it just has a bit more depth. So it's got more spicy nuances and more kind of deep woodsy little facets to it. Um, and it's these kind of complexities, which I wouldn't say are present in the reconstructions. And, and this kind of makes sense, right? Because the reconstructions only had um, 11, 12 ingredients in, whereas the actual bergamot oil has everything that was originally found in nature. The one thing though that this does show is that this is why we can't just replace all of the naturals with synthetic accords so easily, because obviously if we could do that, then 
things like rose, things like jasmine. Um, we would never bother using the natural if we could just make something that was as good easily uh, for much cheaper, right? Why would we even bother using the naturals? But it does go to show why that question exists in perfumery. And if you're doing perfumery and trying to make something, that question will come into play, um, especially depending on what you're making, right? If you're making something expensive, um, say a fine fragrance, maybe you're gonna go with the more of the natural and you're gonna use the synthetic accords a bit less often for the natural replaces. Um, but then on the other hand, if you're making something like a toilet cleaner or something that you wanna mass produce and make loads of and it's gonna be cheap and the very kind of intricate nuances in the smell don't matter quite as much, in that case, maybe it's a better option to go and make your synthetic accord and save on the cash instead. So it really depends on the application and what you wanna be doing. Anyway then, so apart from the natural to the reconstructions, what about the difference between the reconstructions themselves? Well, I found the Bergamot Calabrian reconstruction smelled a lot closer to the Bergamot Calabrian oil, which I actually had. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because they're modeled off the same thing. Whereas the Tunisian reconstruction smelled a bit different and that's because of the higher limonene content, presumably. Um, I don't have actual Tunisian oil, so it's hard to know what that would have smelled like, but it makes sense when you smell the limonene, when you smell the linalol acetate, when you smell the linalol, and then you smell these, you can see quite clearly in the smell um, where these differences are coming in. I think that the Calabrian one probably does smell better. It's not that the limonene smells any worse than the linalol acetate. Um, limonene actually smells really nice. It's this really fresh element of the citrus, the kind of juicy freshness, whereas the linalol acetate and the linalol, they bring it more towards kind of a twiggy, woody, petit grain kind of smell. But yeah, for me, if I was trying to go in that fresh, uh, more juicy direction with the citrus, I probably wouldn't pick bergamot so much in the first place. I would probably lean towards something like orange oil. So I feel like there's no point of doing the halfway house as such with the kind of Tunisian reconstruction. I feel like if you're gonna go for the bergamot, then you might as well go for that more kind of cologne, um, kind of twiggy, woody kind of side of the citrus. Um, and I think that's kind of what you're going for a bit in bergamot. So yeah, all in all, if I was gonna be making a perfume out of this stuff, I would probably stick to the actual real bergamot burger terpene free oil, which I have. That said, if there was a specific application where I wanted the bergamot smell, um, but maybe it was like a cheap functional product or something in which the bergamot was getting massively covered up by something else or the cost needed to be cut loads for some reason, then I would definitely consider the Accord because as much as it didn't have the same kind of little features that the real one had, it still on the whole smelled very close to it. Um, so it actually did do quite a good job in general on like a macroscopic level of getting close to the bergamot smell. So in a sense, it did its job. Now, once I'd done this experiment, I did have some ideas for other things. So similarly along this line, um, this was interesting to a bergamot, but I think also something like lemon oil, uh, maybe orange oil, it could be interesting to the same kind of things. Um, but also what I was thinking was, while um, we looked at really and noticed the changing of the major components, so in this case, the linalol, the limonene, and the linalol acetates, um, what about those minor components, the things like the octyl acetate, the things like the aldehyde C10 or decanal, um, those kind of components which really give it its character. What if we maybe tried overdosing those instead? So it's not something that I've done now, but maybe in the future, uh, that would be something to try because maybe it would make it a lot more colorful. So yeah, these are all things to consider in the future, but for now, that's what I did. Um, I think it was kind of an interesting experiment to do, um, and it definitely does show you a few things about naturals, um, a few things about accords. So yeah, potentially we do this again, I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it interesting. Let me know down in the comments and I will see you next time.